I'd like to introduce uh, our major new module that we're, we're announcing here with Ignition 7.7, .7, which is the, the SFC module. And we're really excited about this module. We really think it's going to bring a whole new level of, of automation power to what Ignition can do. So, so what are SFCs? Um, SFC stands for Sequential Function Chart. And it's one of the five languages that were defined about 20 years ago with the IEC 61131-3 standard, uh, of which ladder logic is by far the most well known. But there are a number of other languages defined at the same time, and, and sequential function charts is one of them. And some of you may be familiar with them. A few of you may have even programmed them already using, using either different software or directly on a PLC. Um, so it's important to, to realize that we did not invent SFCs. This is a, a graphical programming language that's been a standard that's been around for a long time. Um, so why did, we choose, why did we choose to implement sequential function charts? We evaluated a, actually a, a variety of different languages and, and methods to, to create logic engines, and we really found that sequential function charts were uniquely suited to serve as Ignition's logic engine. They're, they're just, they're really powerful uh, constructs, and we've, we've implemented them in a way that sort of cross-pollinates the power of the SFC language with all of the capabilities of Ignition. Um, you know, Ignition is very good at, at a variety of things. Um, writing and reading from tags, running SQL database queries, these are all things that Ignition is very good at. And so our SFC implementation is also very good at doing those sorts of things. So we really think that they, they're going to help streamline the creation of, of robust logic systems. And it's important to note that we observe people creating these types of logic systems already using Ignition, or at least trying to, by sort of cobbling together a bunch of features that we already have, uh, most notably things like timer scripts and tag change scripts and transaction groups. But SFCs really have a dramatic advantage uh, of being able to create these complex systems in a much more simple way and, and very importantly, in a visual manner. So here's a quick look at what an SFC looks like. And, and we'll get into a demo here shortly. You'll get a better look at them. But, uh, you know, SFCs as a language is very easy to learn. There's only a small handful of unique elements, and then it's just up to you to hook up those elements in different configurations. So the main element that does work is called a step, and those are represented by, a, by the big rectangles here in the chart. And so a step might do something like write to a tag, or run a script, or execute a query, or all of those things. Um, they, they just do some discrete amount of work. And then steps are connected to each other, and they're also connected to the chart with, with using transitions. So a transition is this short horizontal bar that you see here in that screenshot. And a transition represents a condition. And the condition is either true or false. And whether it's true or false determines whether or not the chart can move past that transition or not. Pretty simple idea. There's a variety of other, other elements like jumps that I'll, I'll show you in a little bit. But the other important element to talk about here is the parallel branches and sinks. So those, those fat horizontal bars there, that designates a parallel section. And what that does is it lets multiple branches of logic execute simultaneously. And this is really one of the most important parts of what makes the SFC language so powerful, is that it makes writing concurrent logic really easy. And if any of you have uh, dabbled in, in trying to write concurrent programming using a, a procedural language like, like Python, you know that it's very hard to write concurrent logic in a language like Python. You have to, there's a whole bunch of knowledge you have to gain, and you have to be very careful when managing your threads and not creating too many threads and not blocking the threads and dealing with concurrency. There's all sorts of gnarly issues that, that come into play with concurrent programming, but not with SFCs. With SFCs, concurrent programming is very simple. 
So SFCs are very good at certain kinds of things that, that regular scripts might not be as good at. One of those things is, is uh, doing very long running tasks. So you might have an SFC that runs for days, or maybe it just runs indefinitely. It just runs forever. Um, and so we've, we've built our SFC engine in such a way that we expect the SFCs to run for a long time. So long, in fact, that they're built to run even if the gateway is restarted. So if you restart a gateway and you have a, you have a chart running, that chart will pause and then resume itself when the gateway comes back up. So you can, you can write these bits of logic knowing that they're going to run for a long time if appropriate. Uh, again, they're very, they're very good at building parallel tasks. Um, I already mentioned that. They're very good at doing things that wait for stuff to happen, which sounds really simple, but it's actually pretty awkward to, to do that using a, a regular Python script. You know, you, you have to worry about things like blocking threads if you're going to be waiting for a long time. And uh, you don't need to worry about any of that when you're programming using uh, sequential function charts. You can create loops very easily just by drawing the loop on the screen. Uh, you can encapsulate logic into subcharts so that you can create reusable blocks. Um, so these things are really a very powerful programming construct. Now, one of the things that RSFC implementation does that um, that may be may be new to some of you who are already familiar with SFCs is the ability to instantiate multiple chart instances. And so, what this means is that you can you could write a chart that maybe represented the logic that was required to to get a single part down a manufacturing line. And there may be many parts on the line at once, but, but that chart only represents the logic for one part. And then you might have dozens of instances of this chart running simultaneously, each of which were started maybe with the scan of a barcode, so they're following a specific part down the line. That's a really powerful way to model a process um, and keep the logic simple because you only have to deal with one part at a time. Uh, another thing that SOCs are really good at is, is uh, being monitored. So unlike a script, you, when you write a script and you run it, the only way to monitor what it's doing is to watch for the side effects that that script creates. So maybe you know at a certain part in the script it's going to log a message or it's going to write to a tag, and so you watch for those things happening. With a sequential function chart, you can just watch the chart execute because the chart is defined in such a visual nature uh, that you can just watch these things run. And that it makes it really easy to uh, debug these things and, and learn how they work because you can see them so directly. Um, and that monitoring is done either in the Ignition Designer or in a Vision Client. Um, and lastly, the SFC implementation that we've defined uh, lets you edit charts that are already running on the fly in some circumstances. So we call this hot editability. The, the idea here is that maybe you have a chart that runs for 12 hours and you're three hours into this process. So you can't restart this thing, but you're three hours into it and you realize that it's going to get stuck because you've written one of your transition conditions incorrectly. Well, you could tweak that condition on the fly, uh, thus letting your chart um, complete normally. Um, I should mention that that feature isn't available today. That'll be coming out shortly. We're still working on that one, but, uh, but look forward to that one in, in the coming weeks. All right, without further ado, let's start looking at what these things look like in practice. So I've got two little SFC demos for you here today. The first one is really for those of you who are, have never seen an SFC before, kind of to start familiarizing you with, with how these things look and how they run. So here I have, this is actually a vision client, so I've already, I've already defined a chart. And I'm going to have this client start that chart up and then start monitoring it. So I hit my start button, and there's my chart. So all charts start at this upside down triangle with a B in it for begin, and then they just start running. And here I've run my first step, A1, 
which gives me this little message um, that my step ran. And now my chart is waiting. And it's sitting here at this transition because this condition is false. And it's waiting for me to, to make a tag become true, which is this A1 transition tag. So as soon as I make this tag true, the chart will move on past A1 and go to A2, like so. And now we've got a little bit of a different configuration. So first of all, A2 is configured a little bit differently than A1 was. A2 is, is doing continuous work while it's running. So here it is still running and it'll still, it'll keep running until one of these three transitions becomes true. And when you have transitions set up in this branched manner, this is like an or. I'm either going to go down this branch or this branch or this branch, but I'll never do uh, both two branches or three branches at a time. I'm going to clear my console here, and then we're going to go down. We're going to go down branch three. So there we go. We've this transition became true. So we went down uh, down that into the uh, the rightmost branch here, and you can see that. My A2 step stopped and my option three step ran, and now we're stuck again. So we're, we're waiting for this transition, and then we're gonna go into this little circle A. This is what's called a jump. This is a pretty simple idea. So instead of just following a line, we're gonna jump from the, the jump to an anchor. This is the anchor over here. This is just a convenient way to connect parts of your chart uh, where you don't have to draw a big long line that might be just awkward to draw or it might have to cross other elements so it's sort of a it's like a teleport so we're gonna we're gonna follow that um, that jump and that brings us into our parallel section where we start running two steps simultaneously p1 and p2 are both running at the same time and you can see that their messages are being interleaved here in my little log um, and the parallel will only move on to the end of the chart, which is what this big E is, when both of them have finished. So I could finish step P1, and the parallel is going to wait for P2 to finish also, at which point my chart is finished. Okay, so hopefully you now have a, a basic understanding of, of how charts flow. They're really pretty simple. My second demo is a little bit more complex. To just to give you guys a bit of an idea of how uh, sequential function charts might be used in, in a little bit more of a real world situation. So in this case, I have, I have six vessels that are running some sort of small batch process. And they've got three inputs and a, and a recirculating heat exchanger. And so I'm going to go ahead and start vessel one's batch which brings up the chart I've, again, already defined. And this chart is uh, already at work doing a rinse-drain cycle on the vessel. And then as soon as it's done that, it's going to ask me for a recipe. Now, it's important to realize here that the sequential function charts always execute on the gateway. They don't actually execute on the client, even though the client can monitor their progress. But there's a bunch of mechanisms included that help you communicate to and from a client. So in this case, because this client, the one I'm using right now, is the one who started the batch, the chart is asking me, the operator, for the recipe. Now in the real world, it would probably have looked up the recipe from a database, but this works better for a demo. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, accept the default recipe here. And as soon as I hit OK, that signals back to the chart that the recipe is ready and it's going to move on and start adding the ingredients. So we go in here and now we've got this parallel section that's doing three things at once in order to uh, to add our first ingredient which is water. So we can see that it, it was pumping in some water and then it finished. And now it's doing some recirculating because it's, it's uh, heating this thing up. And I'm still in Spanish locale, I can tell, because I've got commas instead of decimal points in my temperature readout from Colby's localization demo. And we finished agitating, and OK, now we've moved on. So we're done with our water ingredient, and we're going to move on to uh, our next ingredient. And you can see that this chart is just going to follow this logic all the way down, where each, each piece of this logic has been altered by the recipe that I chose. So the amount of time and the temperatures that I'm requiring are, are all governed by the recipe that I, that I fed to the chart. 
And I've got some error checking here where if I ever pump in too much stuff, I'm going to stop pumping in and, and I'm going to overflow, which brings me to this error handler over here. Now, this is all nice, but the real power here is that I've got six vessels. So I could go over here to vessel four, and I could start vessel four's batch. And now I've got the same chart, but a brand new instance of it, because this instance was instantiated with vessel four as a parameter. And so it's doing something slightly different. And I could give it a, I could give it a different, uh, a different recipe here where it's going to maybe take more time to run the agitator. And so now this vessel is running. And if I could go back to vessel one, I can see that it's almost done. Looks like it's still coming up to temperature here. And you can see how the instantiation works. I can start as many of these vessels as I'd like, each of which gets their own unique instance of, of my chart. So that's about the end of my, my SFC demo here. Um, we're really excited. You know, one of, the, one of the neat things about SFCs, like many features of Ignition, is that it's just a basic set of tools. And then it's really up to you, the community, to take these tools and turn them into, into uh, interesting things that empower your project. So I'm excited to see what you all do with the SFC module. I think it's going to enable some really exciting configurations that, that uh, we've never seen before. If you're ready to try Ignition for yourself, obviously you can download the full version of Ignition for free on our website. Just go to inductautomation.com, download it, and you'll be up and running in three minutes. You can install Ignition and build your own system with it before you even purchase it. So we're really trying to empower you to, to make an informed choice because uh, we're pretty confident when you get your hands on Ignition, you're going to really want to uh, want to move forward with it.